Well, I when I joined Hell Portrait three years ago, I didn't know what in the world I was going to walk into. I just walked in as a volunteer photographer and walked into an amazing event. process really helps someone that's less fortunate make them feel special and put them through a process that you know they're able to do and remember and um, make them feel good about themselves. It's just it's really good to be able to give and to never forget that it's just it's a gift to yourself to be able to give back to others so it's been really awesome. Well a picture is worth a thousand words and I treasure photos, I treasure pictures. I have loving memories of my sister whom I just lost. Came out to take pictures with my family. Came out to see how, you know, how it all generated. Came out, came out perfect. It can be different for everybody. It could be something that could help change their life or it could just put a smile on their face every day when they walk past their counter and they see the picture, you know. So it can, it means different things to everybody, but hopefully at the least it makes them smile. Photographing is a form of healing for me. It makes me feel special. It really makes me feel wonderful. It was, it was a great experience. In a world where modern culture continues to threaten indigenous ways of life, Seba seeks to preserve and honor sacred cultures by keeping their traditions alive and supporting their creative voice. While making my way through Latin America, I came across a strikingly beautiful weed, so detailed and colorful, it captivated me. I needed to know more, and so I followed the woven strings back to their origin and discovered an unexpected gem, Chamula. Indigenous communities residing in Chiapas are just one of many indigenous cultures worldwide that face uncertain futures. Their cultures and traditions are slowly being lost due to modernization, environmental changes, and lack of opportunities that force relocation. I'm Ashley, the founder of Seba. If I could build the branches to the greater world, the artisans could continue to live their natural way of life. We would be a team, a life force connecting our worlds together through fashion. We would be Seba. A college student's main focus is to graduate, but reaching that goal often comes at a steep price. After graduation, there's debt to pay. Over half of our students have student loans, and in terms of our undergraduates, those freshmen that come in and they graduate that do borrow, they have an average loan indebtedness of about $23,000. Entrepreneur Mark Cuban says, tackling the nation's $1 trillion student debt crisis is needed to help improve the economy. Students may have more debt than they can pay. I will be graduating in December and I'll be graduating with um, close to $30,000 in debt. Secretary of the Treasury Department Sarah Bloom Raskin says the student loan crisis has parallels to the housing bubble that occurred six years ago. With $100 billion of student loans in default, she fears an emergence of a student loan debt relief industry. Students at Texas State also have their worries. Definitely not going to be able to have kids for a while unless if I might go teach at a Title I school and get it paid off fast, or maybe join the military or something like that. But yeah, definitely a different lifestyle, having to pay those guys back. They suck, for sure. But to many students, college just wouldn't be possible without getting loans. It really allows them to have access to higher education, to complete uh, their degree, and really, I think, in terms of their lifestyle and their enrichment, 
having a degree is invaluable and that loan for many students allows them to achieve that goal. If you have any questions on your student loans, visit the Financial Aid Office in the J.C. Kellum Building. For Bobcat Update, I'm Kalen Bernal. Taking a stroll through campus, students can see the Greek community establishing a large presence. Greek Affairs Coordinator Lindsay Troyne says that over the past year, Texas State has experienced record-breaking registrations in the Greek community. I think it's actually a huge benefit. Um, we saw a lot of students that were coming to our campus this year because they wanted to join a fraternity or sorority and when they were torn between two schools they looked at the Greek community to make that decision or help make that decision. Senior Jay Ruffin says having more students involved allows for more diversity. I think that has a big deal to do with uh, the quality of members you take in, um, leadership and things like that. Once you display that image to the public you definitely increase your chances of uh, having a big membership intake. According to Student Affairs, there are 2,500 students enrolled in Greek life, which means higher quotas for chapters. And National Panhellenic Counselor, NPHC, they actually had two new organizations join them. Um, so they've almost doubled in size over this year alone. One result of changes is that more students are taking an interest in recruitment. Um, I think Greek life helps benefit just because it gives people a new idea to see what it's like to be a part of an organization where you not only value yourself, but you value someone else. For more information about Greek life, visit the Greek Affairs Office in the LBJ Student Center. For Bobcat Update, I'm Maya Wintroth. The St. Marcus City Council passed a smoking ban last October, and it went into effect in June. Alyssa Giuliani, the general manager of Bobcat Nation Bar & Grill, says the ban has actually helped improve business. We like to comply with stuff like that to the city because you know, if we have children out here, we don't want them to be around smoke, and that's something that you know, we take into consideration because we're a family business. So uh, we are happy to comply with smoking ban, and it hasn't affected our business. The smoking ban applies not only to tobacco products, but also e-cigarettes and vaporizers. Owner of the Black Rapid Saloon, James Wilson, says the flow of customers remains about the same as before. Had it been just a bar here or there, then people could have been like, I'm going to go next door and smoke cigarettes. But because you can't go anywhere and smoke cigarettes, then it's, it's not a big deal. If you're, if you're a smoker and you go to the square, you have no options except that you just can't smoke. English student Farron Johnson disagrees. Johnson says owners of bars and restaurants should not be told what to do. After all, they own the property. Really, it should be up to the businesses um, who, um, who are there, like bars, for example. Um, a lot of people smoke when they drink. It happens. Um, so whether or not a bar wants to allow people to do that should be up to them. But advertising major Eric Arendendo says the smoking ban is great for the city. Like obviously the majority of people don't like smoking in public places anymore and it's probably good for the like, majority of the people. Some property owners obtain permits to build outdoor smoking areas. If they post such a permit at their businesses, they have until January 1st before they have to go smoke free indoors. If they don't have the permit and the customer is caught smoking indoors, then fines can be issued costing the owner at least $200. The fines go up for any subsequent offense. For Bobcat Update, I'm Maya Wintraub.